news today. Joining me right now is Florida Senator Marco Rubio. He is the vice chairman of the Intel Committee and a member of the Appropriations and Foreign Relations Committee. Senator, it's always a pleasure to see you. Thanks so much for being Thank here. Thanks for having me this morning. Can you cut through the noise for us? Is, is Russia building up troops or pulling back troops? Yeah, what's great about the modern era, it's something brand new, is the commercial imagery, satellites from companies, not even from American intelligence companies. It's out there to see. You can see everything that's happening. You can't hide anywhere in the world anymore. And it's pretty clear that they continue to mass and increase the number of troops in both Belarus, Ukraine, Crimea. In addition to the fact that they're conducting these massive uh, uh, military exercises. So there, there's no doubt about that. And in my mind, you already see this morning all of the propaganda units of the uh, Putin's government are putting out there these narratives to set a pretext, right? They're, they're claiming that uh, they're being attacked, that Ukraine is about to actually attack and things of this nature. So it's all lining up. Ultimately, the decision is up to Vladimir Putin what he's going to do. Um, no one can tell you exactly what he's going to do. I can tell you what I believe. I believe he's going to do something. And why we should care about it is because I think this is going to have a dramatic impact on global energy prices. Even if we weren't involved, it would. And that, of course, is a baseline cost, as you know, that then adds to the cost of everything else at a time when we already have runaway hyperinflation. So uh, I think one more thing that points to why Biden's made a terrible mistake in, in harming America's domestic energy capabilities, um, uh, which would make us less dependent on these global markets in the long term. Yeah, I mean, which is why I'm a little skeptical of this whole story that Russia is about to invade Ukraine. I mean, let's face it, oil prices right now are at $93 a barrel. We had a guest on yesterday who told us that Russia is making a billion dollars a day because they're selling 10 million barrels a day. You're talking about $365 billion a year. Is Putin really going to jeopardize that and create this war in Europe? Well, I don't think that he believes it will ultimately disrupt his ability to sell oil uh, and, and natural gas, for that matter, because Europe has come, become so dependent on it. Now, I will tell you that if there are sanctions against his major banks, as I think there will be, there's going to be disruptions in the payment system. Uh, but ultimately, that he believes that Europeans will have to cave because they've gotten rid of all their nuclear uh, plants. They've become heavily dependent on natural gas, a lot of it flowing from Russia, and they're very in a vulnerable position. So I do think Putin is likely to do this because, in his mind, this is his best opportunity opportunity ever. Uh, as you said, energy prices are up, which is more profit for him. You know, Europe is deeply uh, dependent. He thinks there's weakness in the White House. He knows Macron is distracted by his own election and so forth. So I think he thinks this is his ideal time, maybe his last opportunity to take care of his Ukraine problem. As he buddies up with China, as Xi Jinping, now you've got yeah. the leadership in China weighing really how far they should go in backing Russia in this crisis with Ukraine. Earlier this month, the, the uh, President Xi Jinping endorsed Russia's opposition to a NATO expansion. So what's your take on this partnership uh, between Xi Jinping and, and Vladimir Putin? I think it's a strategic alliance. I don't think it's an, uh, one of, like a traditional alliance, but I'll tell you how comfortable Vladimir Putin is with it. You know, they, there's a whole area there that borders China that's incredible, always been very vulnerable, right? And there's ethnic Chinese that are actually constantly crossing the border over in the Siberia area. And, and they've always had a big troop presence there for fear of an invasion from China or some sort of aggression. They've basically depleted that. I mean, they've pulled everybody out of there and towards uh, uh, Belarus, Ukraine. So it tells you how, how um, you know, how secure he feels about that relationship. And I think for China, they view this as a win in the long term. It, it distracts the United States. It, dist it distracts global attention. And they're going to watch very carefully and see what happens when a powerful country invades a weaker neighbor. What does the world do about it? And what leverage points can you create ahead of time to, to, to buffer it? And I think they're watching very carefully. I don't think that means they invade Taiwan next month or any time this year. But I don't think we finish this decade without them doing something about Taiwan. Well, it doesn't seem like they're afraid at all of the United States in a response there. Let's face it. Now you've got Iran being brought into the fold, China, Russia and Iran. And, Senator, you've been so great on China. You've had such leadership on this issue because I know that you recognize this threat, as do we. You say that China isn't just guilty of human rights abuses within the country, but abroad as well. Tell us about that um, in terms of what you're seeing uh, from the, at the CCP's hands. 
Well, you know, the, the Communist Party sends people into other countries, including the United States, agents of influence and agents, flat out agents, to knock on the doors of people and tell them, hey, you really should come back to China and face charges because your family lives there. Uh, they do it in the United States. We know they've done it here. They've done it all over the world. And, and that's one of the ways that they're exporting this is that they're actually going to the people and saying, yeah, your family's in China. We want you to come back to China because we'd like you to answer some questions about some things. And there have been some people that have caved in. A lot of them are afraid to go to the authorities. But that's happening in the United States of America. And it's happened all over the world. And then, obviously, in addition to it, China's economic power has turned Hollywood and the media and, um, and corporate America into their agents and into, into, into companies and organizations who won't question anything China does and, in fact, pushes China's narrative, but are quick to criticize the United States and criticize America and criticize American governments, American politicians, and American society. Yeah, this is all very disturbing, Senator, and uh, I guess I'd like to zero in on what we're going to do about it. So let's talk policy and why, for example, Joe Biden hasn't even mentioned the origins of COVID-19 to Xi Jinping. Why are we tiptoeing along around the CCP? A quick break and then more from Senator Marco Rubio this morning as the Olympics continue in Beijing. Stay with us.